In this video today, I'm going to show you how to choose the right cabin for you. I just want to say a quick thanks to everyone that continues to subscribe to my channel. I do appreciate it and it helps me to bring you content like this. So if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. Whether you've cruised before or not at all, choosing a cabin is actually one of the more important parts about booking a cruise. There's many things to consider, including the location of the room, the room type, and also, of course, the price. Speaking in general terms, rooms are broken down into various categories and they start at the very top with suites. And then underneath that, there's usually a category for mini suites or junior suites. Underneath that, you'll then find your balcony cabins. Underneath that, you'll have your ocean view cabin, so they have a window. And then you'll have your interior cabin. So those are cabins that have no window and no natural light. Depending on the ship that you choose to sail on, some of them are huge. So when you're choosing a cabin, it's important to take into consideration where you're picking the cabin. We're going to go through the deck plans now of the P&O Pacific Adventure. This ship has yet to sail for P&O. It's still known as the Golden Princess, but it will be transferred to P&O um, after undergoing a multi-million dollar refit. And it will be coming down, it's scheduled to come down in October this year. So very excited about Pacific Adventure. So let's take a look at the Pacific Adventure deck plans now together. And then I'm going to describe to you the different categories of cabins and where they're based and why they're different prices as well. So if we look down here at um, the room grading, so we can see that we start with suites and we see the very best suite is the grand suite here on deck 11. And then you can see that there are various categories underneath. So GS, OS, PA, PB, etc. Other cruise lines might use different acronyms or labels for their rooms, but it's all very much the same. So when you look down the suite categories, let's take a look at SP, which is right here. And then if we scroll on over to the right, this is deck 15. And you can see obviously the color is indicating this is the SP category suite. So these rooms, as you can see, are quite large and spacious and they have a balcony, which is indicated in this section here. Uh, conversely, you can see that 15702 and 15704 do not have a balcony. And if we look over to the key, we can see that this is an ocean view room on deck 15 and it's also available on deck eight and they're interconnecting as well. So there's lots of things to take note of when you look at a deck plan, but let's keep going with the categories. So let's say that you've settled on a balcony room and that's what you want. Now, what you're going to then decide is the location of that balcony room. So if we take a look down at the balcony key on the Pacific Adventure deck plan, you can see that we have a few options. We can go as low as deck eight and we can go all the way up to deck 14. So in this case, you've settled on deck 11 because you like the fact that deck 12, there are cabins above you, deck 10, there are cabins underneath you. So you're pretty confident that it's gonna be a quiet spot on the ship. Now, most people, if you've cruised before, you would know probably that staying midship is generally the more stable part of the ship. So if you're concerned about movement in the ship, you'll wanna look for something in a midship region. So if we look down at deck 11, we can see that there are midship cabins uh, right here in this green section on either side of the ship. And you'll also be able to see that they're right next to the central elevators that will take you right through the ship. So if we scroll on down, we can see deck 10, deck nine, deck eight, seven, six, five, and these stairs and elevators are linked up all the way. So you can be very quickly accessing all of other areas of the ship, including going up to deck 14 where the pool is. So there's plenty of access and it's actually a really good location. So once you've settled on that, you'll think, okay, I want that section of the ship. And you'll see that it is a BA category balcony stateroom. So once you know that, you can then price that up or contact me and I'll price that up for you. And it's really as simple as that. So whatever category you choose, you're just really looking at the location of that room to see whether or not you're happy with it. So the other thing to take note of is that the pricing of the categories will depend on their location. So the better locations will generally be considered midship. So midship rooms will always be at a premium. So a balcony cabin on the aft of the ship compared to midship or forward are identical. The only difference is the location and you will pay more to be in a midship location. So if you're like me and you don't really mind where you are on the ship and you're more interested in ensuring that you have the category that you pick, 
The best thing to do if available is book a guarantee cabin. So a guarantee cabin means that you've selected the category that you're after. So in this case, a balcony, the cruise line at its own discretion can position you anywhere it likes in a free balcony cabin. So at minimum, you will have a balcony cabin and the position of that will be determined by the cruise line up until the point of sailing. In most cases, a cabin number will come through prior to sailing, but it really can take up to the sailing date to know which cabin you're in. If you don't mind living life like that, then it's a good option if you're interested in saving a few dollars. Booking a guaranteed cabin is generally cheaper than booking a specific cabin number. Now, noise has been a concern for some of my clients when cruising, and in that case, you do wanna be more specific about where you're choosing a cabin. And a good rule of thumb in that case is to choose a cabin that has cabins underneath it and above it. If you choose a cabin, for example, that is under the pool deck, so in this case, on deck 12, you may experience noise from above. Now, when we speak of noise, we don't necessarily mean that it's going to be footsteps, but if someone is running or if there are kids that are running, it may echo through. If you are a light sleeper, that's something you will wanna take into consideration. Another area that has been flagged by previous cruisers is cabins that are located near the theater. So you'll see here, for example, the Marquee Theater has cabins both underneath on deck five and above on deck eight. In some cases, people have complained about hearing music through the walls. If you're a light sleeper, that is something that you'll want to consider. Another point to take into consideration is booking a cabin that's at the back of the ship. Now on the Pacific Adventure, you'll find that some of the best suites on the ship are actually located on the aft. Now they afford you a fantastic view towards the back of the ship, but one downside of this position is that there is quite a lengthy walk into the middle of the ship. If you want to get to the middle of the ship to go to the coffee shop down the bottom uh, or any of the areas that are forward, you will be walking several hundred meters. So that's not necessarily a bad thing, uh, but it's just something once again to keep in mind. And this again speaks to why midship is such a popular area um, and is generally priced more highly than other areas on the ship. So one of the other very important things about choosing a room is choosing the category. So if you haven't cruised before, you might not necessarily know that interior rooms have no window whatsoever and uh, ocean view rooms have a window, does not open. In addition to that, you then have the balcony rooms that we've discussed. You then have mini suites and full suites. Even within certain categories, there can be differences. So it is important to speak to your travel advisor or to really get close and comfy with those deck plans. Choosing an interior room is generally the most affordable way to get onto a cruise. Without any natural light, People certainly say they sleep well in them because it's always dark. And you should know that there are televisions in each room with a link to a bridge cam. And the bridge cam looks forward and is a live connection. So even through the television uh, without a window, you can see if it's daylight outside or what the weather is doing. So that's a good feature to have. You'll find that on some cruise lines in Royal Caribbean have innovated with this in particular, they have interior state rooms with virtual balconies. So no window, but a virtual balcony means that they have a giant television screen that has a live feed connection uh, that is on all the time and it shows you the outdoors. You can dim that completely so that it's off, but otherwise it gives you that sense of being outdoors from an interior cabin. So certainly a unique way to give people a new perspective uh, rather than just having a darkened room. If you are interested in natural light, I would definitely recommend an ocean view. And of course, if you're interested in fresh air and having that additional space outdoors, to have your own private sense of connection with the ocean or just another place to hang out, then a balcony room is definitely the thing to go for. Balcony rooms are the most popular category of cabin. And as these ships are getting newer and newer and bigger and bigger, you'll find that ocean view cabins are not even featured anymore. In general and personally, I will go for a balcony cabin as a minimum. Now, in some cases, you may think that if you're wanting the most affordable holiday, an interior cabin is all you can go for. But in actuality, you do need to check because in so many cases, it's only a matter of dollars per day per person to upgrade to either an ocean view or a balcony room. So always check, don't just assume that the interior is going to be the cheapest, although it usually will be, in some cases and generally in sales, you'll find that you can get an ocean view or a balcony cabin for not much more than an interior. 
And within suite categories, there are a whole range of differences. So it's very important that if you are after a suite, to speak to your travel advisor or me to make sure that you get the right one. So going for a suite is a luxury for sure, but does definitely come with some perks. And those perks do vary from cruise line to cruise line and others have uh, inclusions that come with staying in a suite like free drinks or access to specialty lounges every evening with an open bar. Um, so there's definitely things to look into and you'll find that the value can be justified when you do take into account those extra perks. And of course, one of the biggest considerations to make with a suite is the fact that you have so much extra space. So generally you'll have an extra large balcony, a living area, bedroom area, a very large bathroom, usually with a bath, a jacuzzi tub, a uh, freestanding shower maybe. So it's a great idea to check them out and I will be producing a separate video all about suites in the coming weeks. It's fantastic to see that a lot of people are getting in touch with me for cruising at the end of 2020 and especially into 2021. So feel free to reach out if you do want to consider a cruise. You can head to my website, thecruiseandtravelguy.com.au and you can also follow me on social media at The Cruise and Travel Guy on Facebook and Instagram. And thanks for watching. I hope you've found this video helpful. Please feel free to leave a comment and I'll see you again soon. Stay safe. Categories of... Oh. Pick a cabin of category... Depending on the ship that you choose to sail on, they're very big. This ship has yet to sail for P&O. It's actually still uh, labeled... Labeled? Your best bet is generally to book if a, if if you're like me and you not bothered by where you are. Your payoff is that you pay less. <laughs>